Okay, thank you very much. Hello, everybody. You, you can hear me? Yes, okay, very good. Well, <clears throat> I am very honored to be the first speaker uh, of this session. I'm going to talk about uh, methodology for ensuring compliance to the power architecture. We are talking here about processor compliance, uh, processor the compliance of the processor design uh, um, over the power uh, architecture. Um, <coughs> This work is being targeted by uh, the growth of the open power ecosystem in which we expect to see processors being developed over the power architecture. Um, and uh, of course, there will be a need to show uh, compliance of those uh, processors to the power architecture. Uh, basically, the way we do that is by developing a suite of tests. We call it an architecture compliance suite. Um, <coughs> And that's what I'm going to, uh, to describe to you uh, today. Uh, but before uh, going anywhere, uh, I just want to make sure when I say suite of tests, when I say test, that we are synchronized. Uh, test is a word which is used in so many contexts, it has so many meanings, so let's make sure you understand. Here what I'm talking about is very simple. It's the tests that are being used in um, <coughs> pre -silicon, the stage of pre-silicon verification, uh, for functional verification. Basically, as you can see, or maybe you cannot see on the slide, it's just a list of assembly instructions uh, for which we need to see the results. And we, we can also have in the test, it's optional, we can also have the uh, initial state of the machine. Uh, again, before going on, uh, one word of caution or expectation. As I guess, any work on compliance it's a bit heavy and not so easy to convey. It might be a bit tedious. So archi architecture is huge and complex, a lot of details. What I'm going to try here is just to give you an overall feeling about what it is, what it consists of to develop such a suite. Uh, and we'll try to uh, maybe point out some of the more interesting aspects of this work. But I won't be comprehensive by any means. Um, <coughs> with this in mind, I think the two first questions that we have is uh, what is it? What is an architecture compliance suite and what do we need that for? So what is it? It's very simple, a suite of tests showing that arch the architecture has been correctly followed. Uh, might sound uh, innocuous, maybe trivial, but it's not that simple as we will see uh, hopefully in the next slides. Uh, but for now, this definition is sufficient. What do we need it for? Two main reasons. One, uh, from the open power standpoint, it's kind of a certificate, a kind of test that new processors have to pass to show that they are really compliant. It's important to see that all the applications being developed over this platform uh, are running similarly, are running smoothly. Uh, and on the other hand, we have, uh, from the developer standpoint, it's also an assistant, an assistance to show that uh, it, he, already, he really understood well the architecture. So let's move on. And <coughs> I, am, I am often asked, okay, it's very nice this uh, architecture compliance suite, but if I run it, I, can I be sure that my design is correct? So of course the answer is no, in fact it's no twice no, for two reasons. One is, um, <coughs> theoretically, there is no final uh, set of tests which can ensure that the design is correct. Okay, that should be clear to everyone. Uh, but what is maybe a little bit less clear is that an architecture compliance suite is not a verification suite, okay? We are only looking at the architecture and trying to see that whoever designed the processor understood what's written in the architecture. We are not taking into account the microarchitecture, which is, of course, the source of most bugs. Uh, so a very simple example that you can see here, a, a compliance switch should cover the special case of zero and overflow for an add instruction because they are described, they are defined in the architecture. But if a designer decided to do something very 
uh, special for a, an increment uh, plus one, then maybe there is a bug there, and but the compliance suite is not going to go in this direction. That's a very simple and synthetic example, but you know you can think about, for example, out of order execution, which is certainly a source of many bugs. Uh, we don't cover that. The suite is not covering this. All right. Now, when we speak about a, a suite of tests, there are two components. One, the target is the architecture, and the other is the test themselves and the content. So that's what I'm going to describe now in the next two slides. On the one hand, the architecture, and then the test. So the architecture for us, very simple. We see that as two parts. One is the instructions, the definition of the instruction. There are a lot, more than 1,000 instructions. And then there are mechanisms which are also defined in this architecture, like, like address translation, interrupt, transactional memory, memory mod various rules in memory model. Uh, and, and that's one point that I can say that we, we cover multiprocessing in, uh, in this suite as well. Now next. Um, next, I, I, I'm speaking about what we have in this test. So, we cover each specified behavior in the architecture, okay? So for the instruction, usually that will mean that we do single instruction test. And for mechanisms, sometimes we will need more than uh, one instruction. You can think of multiprocessor, multiprocessing or, or transactional memory. Now, we at this point, and, and I'm sorry, I, I, my, my presentation was supposed not to show this. I, 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 was, I had to, uh, to push a button to get to the next one, so it's showing all the slides in one time. But, so all the, all the suspense is going away, but you, know, you have to play with me on that. So at this point, without seeing that, uh, we might be tempted to think uh, that it's enough, right? Behav the architecture is defining a lot of behaviors, and we cover all those behaviors. That looks like it's enough, it's good, and we are done. So we are not, okay? And the reason is that it's fine that we are covering all what is defined. So we are sure that the processor is doing what it should do. But still, we need to check that it's not doing what it should not do. And that brings us to, that's a kind of non-behavior, that brings us to a model of misinterpretation that we have in our, in our uh, methodology. Misinterpretations are two kinds. One, internal, it means internal to the architecture, meaning some, for example, some instructions uh, are doing a certain behavior, but similar instructions are doing something else. And, and we must be sure that uh, those other instructions are not doing what, what they should not do, even though what they should not do is not described in the architecture, right? So an example is the add instruction. Some type of add instruction are not setting the overflow bit. So it's a good idea to check that, even though it's not described as a behavior. External is a bit more, is a bit less intuitive. An external misinterpretation is a misinterpretation due to our knowledge of other architectures. So it's more rare, there are a few cases that we have tests for that, but I'm not going to go into that. All right, so now the next three, in the next three slides, I'm going to give you a peek on, on how the document of the methodology look like, what we request, what type of test we request. The three slides, one is going to be for instruction, the second for mechanism, and the third is going to show a more, a more challenging case, I would say. So, First one, instruction, what you see here is a description of the behavior we are trying to cover. Uh, the behavior is uh, getting a result of zero, and as a result, we should have, we should set a certain register, a certain condition register. Uh, next, we have a which instruction, the recording instruction, the one which are actually doing that. That's the one we will need to check. And the non-recording instruction are the one which come for the misinterpretation. They should not do it, but we need to check it as well. And then you have the table, uh, and in the table what we see is what expected result we are uh, looking to have. 
Uh, and also the observability condition or precondition, that's what we define to be uh, what should be the, the state before we have the test. So we make sure that we see the result, right? If a certain result put zero in a register, you don't want to start the test with zero. It's a very simple case. Some cases are much more complex than that, like atomicity. Wh how exactly we need to define the precondition is not is far from trivial. So next uh, mechanism, that's a very simple one, a very generic one. The architecture uh, defines what should be done uh, in case multiple case of interrupts are in the same time, should be taken at the same time. Uh, and there is a priority being defined, so what we request, of course, is to see that for every pair of interrupts, the correct prior priority is being taken. So next, I call it a compliance enigma. What we saw previously with the two first examples is that if someone made a mistake, then with very high probability, we would catch it, almost 100%. But that's not always the case, and that's one case where we have more difficulties to reach a good, a good probability. I'm going to try to explain it to you. Uh, it's the behavior that we are looking at here uh, is a storage access ordering rule uh, in multiprocessor. So you can see the scenario. We have two processors. One is storing to a certain address A, the second is storing to, and then storing to B, and the other one is loading in inverse order. And, and the architecture here requests, um, the architecture is not requesting anything for the uniprocessor. It can be in any order. But for the multiprocessor, if, P, if P2 loaded the new B, it should load the new A. And, 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 and what you can see here is that we will request, of course, to have this scenario, but, but the probability that it will work by chance is high, meaning maybe in some other cases of this scenario, other microarchitecture state, it will not work. Um, so it's a challenge to understand how to do, how to increase the probability that everything is okay. You could ask to have many tests like that, or you could ask to, uh, to have this test in, in, in extreme microarchitecture situation, but then you touch the microarchitecture that you don't want to, you don't want to know. So uh, uh, we have a solution, it's not 100%, I'm not going into it, but just giving you a feeling that there are challenges in this work. Um, so again, I, 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 I didn't talk about many things related to the work, and here I'm just saying a few facts. Um, it's a huge uh, document, the methodology is huge, many tests, uh, most of them are single instructions, and, and most of them uh, are for the instruction. Uh, model. We didn't talk about it, but uh, uh, one thing which is a headache for compliance is the fact that architecture typically leave a lot of things unspecified. And in fact, there are three different types of unspecified, undefined, optional, uh, and multiple uh, options, and we have to deal differently with each case. Last, last bullet is speaking about kind of an intriguing question is, so we have this suite of tests, a company or a processor uh, is running it and it fails. Okay, there are mistakes, so what do we do? Okay, on one extreme we could say, well, you know, you failed. Come again in one year and then maybe you will succeed. Another possibility is uh, to say, well, yeah, here, here are your bugs, uh, correct them and, uh, and rerun the same test, which doesn't look very satisfying, but I guess we will need to, to find a solution for that probably much closer to the second option I, give, I gave, of course. Okay, summary. So we saw that this architecture compliance suite is a huge suite of tests uh, for verifying architecture compliance, and it should not be confused with a verification suite. Um, we target the instruction definition and the mechanism uh, through their specified behavior and the model of misinterpretation. Maybe it's one place to ask a question, the similar question I asked before, right? Some people are asking, well, you run the suite of tests, your design is okay? No. You run the suite of tests, your design is compliant? No, right? No, because we saw that in some cases it's a probability, right? We have, we have difficulty with the probability, we are not 100%. 
but even more uh, clearly, misinterpretation uh, is really something which uh, is completely open-ended. You can find many, many other misinterpretations always. Uh, so, but in general, I can say that compliance is well, well tackled for most, uh, for most cases. Thank you.